You know, we've been taught to never judge a book by its cover. Well, in rock and roll, today's video I think is gonna prove that in spades. When anyone thinks of the baddest rock stars on the planet, or it's ever been, today's artists would likely be at the back of the line. It's because they've judged his work and persona off of a few radio hits. Well, that bias has caused many to miss out on one of the greatest bat catalogs of songs in history, and one of the baddest cats in the business. We're gonna let you in on the secret coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Make sure to subscribe right now by hitting the red button so you always get a, our new videos, interviews, the story straight from the artists. What if I told you that one of the baddest dudes in rock history was hiding in plain sight all these years? Let me give you some starters. His father escaped from the Nazis. He got his nose broken in a boxing match after winning 22 of 25 bouts. And he learned to box because he used to get picked on by bullies for taking piano lessons. He had a heavy metal band called Attila decades before the genre actually flourished. After his first album was mastered at the wrong speed that made him sound like a chipmunk, he wrote one of the greatest songs in history while hiding out at a dive bar after signing a horrible contract. He would prove time and time again to be the ultimate fighter, waging comeback after comeback after comeback, selling over 100 million records despite elitist critics attacking him from all sides. He broke his hand in a life-threatening motorcycle accident that he walked away from, and he relearned to play. He dropped an F-bomb in one of his songs well before Eminem was even a, a twinkle in his mother's eye. And he sold out one of the most prestigious venues in the world consecutively for almost a decade, despite the fact that he hasn't released new music in like 30 years. I could go on and on and on. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm talking about our own modern day Gershwin, the self-deprecating songwriting genius known as Billy Joel. Let's get to the real meat and potatoes though, the music. Most people don't realize it, but the piano man, Billy Joel, is the sixth best-selling artist in American history. He's just behind Led Zeppelin and just ahead of Michael Jackson. After releasing his iconic song, Piano Man, in 1973, he became a household name. With the diamond-selling 1977 album, The Stranger, as well as his massive hits, you know, We Didn't Start the Fire. Uptown Girl. And it's still rock and roll to me. And uh, just the way you are. Let's be clear though. All the critics and most non-fans judge his work off these big selling singles. If you're one of those people, I'm gonna ask you to just open your mind for a second. Because everyone knows Billy can write a hit song. I mean, he's written 33 top 40 hits, and he probably could have had 33 more had he released more singles or written more material. But his work is so much deeper than those radio hits. I mean, any true Billy Joel fan knows that his album tracks are better than the big radio hits. And as this segment will prove, I hope. Vienna waits for you. There are many Billy Joel classics hiding in plain sight. Songs that for the most part weren't hits. I mean, four of these five songs were never released as singles. But in my opinion, they're some of the best songs of the rock era. Again, open your mind. Here are five Billy Joel hidden gems you ought to add to your soundtrack for life with commentary by his former drummer, the one and only Liberty DeVito, as well as a surprise cameo. So let's get into this fiver, including the song where he drops the F-bomb. Number five, sleeping with the television on from the number one 1980 album, Glass Houses. But you'll be sleeping with the television on. This song is just gangbusters. For those who judge Billy from a couple of his most famous singles, this is one of the songs that blows up any of your assumptions about the man. This is who Billy really is. The insecure, hopeless, romantic, everyman. I wish I was less of a thing. 
That's why the nerds, including me, could all relate to him. Billy's music is so eclectic. I mean, he can write a song that's in the vein of a certain artist or genre. In the case of Glass Houses, his stepson was showing him the latest records by new wave acts like Elvis Costello. And Blondie. The Joe Jackson. Is she really going out with him? Gary Newman. Billy took a stab at New Wave. But here's the thing. The music Billy composes is just so melodically superior to anyone on radio then and now. Your eyes are saying talk to me. And this is not a knock on these new wave artists like Elvis Costello. Um, it's just that Billy Joel has maybe one guy that can keep pace with him on writing powerfully melodic hit songs. That person just happens to be a Beatle. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so on Sleeping with the Television on, Billy gives us a snapshot of a night out on the town trying to woo a woman named Diane, a woman who no man has found a way to break down her walls. He's noticed that she's shooting down guys right and left because she's waiting for somebody good to come on. But he warns her that if she waits too long, that she'll be sleeping with the television on. But she'll be sleeping with the television on. Which is an analogy for going to bed alone, hence the TV is one's companion. And throughout the song, he makes reference to this, as well as the fact that he's thinking about his own possibility of ending the night alone because he doesn't have the guts to approach her. You know, so they'll both likely be waking up all alone with only the sound of the white noise. Take some kind of chances, dear. Tomorrow morning you'll wake up with the white noise. It's a theme that Billy Joel has visited in several of his songs, like My Life, where he says, then they'll tell you you can't sleep with somebody else. Oh, but sooner or later, you sleep in your own space. Either way, it's okay. You wake up with yourself. And then a few years later, he did it in An Innocent Man where he says, some people sleep all alone every night instead of taking a lover to bed. Some people find that it's easier to hate than to wait anymore. Easier to hate than to wait anymore. It's the other thing, a genius lyricist. He never gets the credit as a lyricist. Similar themes, but completely different situations and musical feelings there. But there's a deep loneliness behind all three of these songs and a lot of Joel's work. Sleep with the Television On should have been a single. I mean, it's so catchy. It's definitely nostalgic for boomers and Gen Xers. As the song starts with the sound of the old TV sign off with the Star Spangled Banner. And then the tone and the color bars that we all remember so well. Most young people will never know due to, you know, 24 seven TV streaming. <laughs> Billy always has a knockout line from his song that resonates with real people. The classic line here is, I really wish I was less of a thinking man and more a fool who's not afraid of rejection. Less of a thinking man and more a fool who's not afraid of rejection. It's how I felt as a 12 year old kid trying to get the stones to ask the pretty girl to slow dance at the awkward school dance. Always trapped inside my own head. Here's what Liberty said about it. There's a song called Rubber Lover by a band called Mama Duke Duke. And they do, they sample the bam, 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 bam. And then it goes into their song. And it sounds so great. The guy wrote me and he wanted to send me the track. It was released in England. And uh, he sent me the CD and he goes, every time I write a song, I try to think of what would Liberty DeVito play on this <laughs> song? <laughs> I love that. Yes, yeah, such a great song. It's definitely got that new wave feel to it, that energy that was going on at that time. Yeah, that and Lena, Lena. Oh, all for Lena. Coming in at number four, This Night, from Billy's Top 5 1983 album, An Innocent Man. This night can last for me. 
after the very serious 1982 album, The Nylon Curtain, Billy took a vacation and he met Christy Brinkley, fell in love and started courting her. That experience became the music of an innocent man, a tribute to music before the Beatles, early rock and roll before it lost its innocence, doo-wop, soul, party rock. And he tips his hat to certain artists like the Drifters, Benny King, James Brown on Easy Money, Four Seasons on Uptown Girl, early Motown would tell her about it and so much more. An Innocent Man had six top singles, and all of them went to the top 30. One song that wasn't released as a single, but should have been, was a song called This Night. Would have been top 10 for sure. Didn't I say I wasn't ready for a doo-wop dazzler based off the second movement of Beethoven's Patatique Sonata. Features one of Billy Joel's best ever vocals, and that's saying something. Let's pause and talk about Billy as a vocalist for just a second. We gotta do that. He's self-deprecating when he talks about his singing. It always takes a backseat to Billy as a composer. But mark my words, Billy Joel is on a very short list of the finest singers in popular music history. Because he's so versatile, he gets shortchanged. But when he was at his peak, which was really during this album, he could outsing the best of them. And we have the recordings to prove it. Listen to the chorus of an innocent man. An innocent man. Or this song. Oh, it's such a long time away. Billy can flat out wail. This night just builds and builds in depth and, and emotion. Billy Joel, he really lays his heart on the line with this song as he, he begs, he pleads, he gives every ounce of, of passion and conviction that the human voice can muster to convince his love that this night can last forever. This night can last forever. It's a song that electrifies every last hair on your body. I gotta tell you, here's what Liberty said about the song. Well, the, the song was by the toys. The one that goes, how gentle is the rain that falls on that and How gentle is the rain that falls on That's a classical piece, right? It's a Beethoven totally. song. Love is Concerto. That's the name of the song. Love is Concerto. So it was like, Billy loved Tassatique. And when he came in with the song, it was like, oh my God, that's so brilliant that you're writing lyrics to that song. I really love that song. I think it's a great So great. great song. Vocally, I think it's his best song in the album, uh, right there with an innocent man. But when yeah. he goes into the ending, tomorrow. tomorrow and then I oh, that's like Yeah, it modulates at the end too, like just like those oldies did. Yeah. That takes you right back to the 50s, man. Yeah, it could, you, you could be with Johnny Maestro, man. You know, the way his voice was projected and was strong. Totally. You know? But then again, don't forget, on 52nd Street. Until the night. Yes. Until the night. Righteous Brothers all the way. Coming in at number three, I'm going with The Night Is Still Young from his Greatest Hits Volume 1 and 2 compilation. It's actually one of the best-selling albums ever in the U.S., that was released in 1985. Uh, Billy was just coming off the massive hit album, An Innocent Man, as I just mentioned. His marriage to Christy Brinkley. He released this two-record set with the very 80s trick of adding a, a couple of new songs to a best-of record to attract fans who already had all these songs or all the hits. Both of the new songs were released as singles with You're Only Human, Second Wind, parenthesis song going to number nine. And this one went to number 34. Liberty DeVito remembers this well. He's amazing. My favorite lyric 
I'm going to jump to another album now, is on one of the greatest hits, Not Is Still Young. Because we were at that age when he said, young enough to still see the passionate boy that I used, used to, to be, be, but I'm old enough to say I got a good look at the other side. But I'm old enough to say I got a good look at the other side. Woo! <laughs> when he said that in the line, I was like, what did you just say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Checkpoints of Life, that's the song that was playing when I proposed to my wife. I turned that song on. She walked into the room. I got down on my one knee and proposed to her. So yeah. I love that song. I was glad when he started playing that live again because that is such a powerful chorus. The, oh, uh, yeah. that whole, all those voices. Incredible. Yeah. Yes, it's true. I had this song playing on an iPod speaker when I proposed to my wife back in the day. It's kind of our song. I absolutely love Billy's passion on this song. Not only what Liberty mentioned, but also the part about being tired of living the single life and the line, you know, rock and roll music was the only thing I ever gave a damn about. Rock and roll music was the only thing I ever gave a damn about. Uh, there was always something missing, but I never used to wonder why. Now I know you're the one who's going to make things right again, and I may lose the battle, but you're giving me the will to try. And I may lose the battle, but you're giving me the will to try. I love that, because he's admitting that he's a flawed human being, and the relationship could most likely fail, but he has the will to go after it. I also love this drum part. One of the most sincere love songs of Billy's career. Coming in at number two, Laura from the 1982 masterpiece, The Nylon Curtain. Laura has a very hard time. The Nylon Curtain is Billy's Sgt. Pepper, his Pet Sounds. It's my favorite album of all time, tied with Pet Sounds. And in my estimation, it is the supreme recollection of the baby boom experience. I spent over an hour talking about this album with Liberty DeVito, and I hope to do that someday with Billy himself. Sometime we'll release the full Liberty breakdown of this album song by song. But in the meantime, if you have not already, do yourself a huge favor. Treat yourself. Three words for you. Treat yourself. Treat yourself 2011. And buy this record. Listen to it on a great pair of headphones from back to front, and I promise you that your life will not be the same after you hear this entire thing. It's quite literally sonic perfection. And one of the highlights is the second song, titled Laura. Laura is the mid-period Beatles song that you've never heard. It's note for note John Lennon, ever hauntingly so. And uh, this song has an F-bomb in it. And Billy says it with such passion that it feels like he just made it up on the spot. Here's what Liberty said about it. My favorite song of all the songs he's ever written is probably Laura. Let's talk about Laura because that's very Beatles-esque and uh, orchestral beginning and with the George Harrison guitar solo, really. I mean, it sounds like George Harrison. It sounds so much like George Harrison and the guitar solo that sometimes when I'm listening to it, I have to remind myself that it's us and it's not the Beatles. <laughs> I know. Because that, that break in the middle is like, oh my God, it sounds like the Beatles. I know. <laughs> you know, it's funny too. It sounded so much like the Beatles that Julian Lennon hired Phil Ramone to do his first album because he heard Nylon Curtain. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, Billy sounds like three of the four Beatles at different times in the album, in my opinion. You yeah. can obviously hear the Lennon in like Scandinavian Skies and, and Laura, and then yeah. McCartney in uh, Where's the Orchestra and A Room. Yeah. You know, if I, if I had my way, and I always said this, because I've, I've heard Billy, you know, just sit at a piano at his house and, and start to sing Beatles songs and stuff like that. And I always said that it would have been so great when they were both in their prime, after John had passed away, if Billy and Paul had gone on the road and did Beatles songs and, and, and uh, Billy would do John's part. Totally. Because, you know, I love watching Paul now, but when they get to the John part, it's like, 
okay, fast forward, come on, you know, because P- Billy can do the the John thing. Totally. And there there was a time when the Beatles came out with the anthology that they were talking about who would be the Beatle that would take over for Lennon if they came together and went on tour. And there was a poll, and I remember Billy was at the top, near the top. I think it was Billy and there were a few other major rockers at that point, but uh, I yeah. totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. Because Billy, Billy was a huge Beatle fan. Oh, huge. yeah. We, as a matter of fact, when we did sound checks, we never did Billy Joel songs. We always did Beatles songs. <laughs> it's definitely about his mother. But, uh, you know, he didn't want to blatantly say mother calls, you know. <laughs> so Laura fits the, the syllables. Laura calls me in the middle of the night. But most people didn't know that. You know, I put that in my book that it, it, it's about his mother. And uh, people were shocked. I remember telling people that that knew everything about the Beatles. I would say, "Oh yeah, what is Laura? Uh, what is Laura about?" And they would say, "It's a girl that he." No, it's about his mother. Oh you yeah, know? And she'd sit in my chair even if I faced electrocution. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> No kidding. Well, yeah. and to my knowledge, the first ever mainstream artist to use the F word kind of at their peak. I mean, if you think about it, all those great records that come out, Stranger, 52nd Street, Glass Houses, Billy's on the top of his game, you guys are going, and he releases this album with this song where he drops the F-bomb. And yeah. I remember that that was a shocking thing back then. Yeah, but you know what? When we did it, after he said that word... When we played live, because he knew there was kids in the audience, he tried to uh, friggin' freaking. It just didn't have the same punch as that f bomb. You know, once you say that f bomb, it's hard to take it back. Okay, before I reveal the number one song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. I have my my latest pair on right now. I just ordered these a couple of weeks ago. I designed it myself. I put in my prescription, the cost of these things, just amazing. Less than a vinyl record. Go get yours at the link below zenny.com. Coming in at number one, it's Until the Night from Billy's 1978 number one album, 52nd Street. Until the night, until the night. Now, 52nd Street has quite a few hidden gems on it that it might take her better than the singles from the album, namely the Jazzy Zanzibar, which has had uh, a revolution on TikTok. I got a jazz guitar, I got a tap. Rosalinda's eyes. Oh, Havana, I've been searching for you everywhere. And one of the greatest gut-wrenching epics of Billy's legendary career, Until the Night. The sun goes down and the day is over. I mean, the opening piano and bass grab you by the throat and they never let you go. Is this what we believe in? Beautiful guitar uh, just slices through this barn burner. The piano swells and every single chorus raises the listener's emotion, our emotion, to levels that the heart and soul can, can barely take. Billy Joel pays homage to Bill Medley and Bobby Hatfield doing both voices with so much raw power and efficacy. At several points in the song, he outrighteous is the Righteous Brothers. I never ask you where you go. I'm not going overboard here. Go listen to the song. It's you've lost that love and feeling on freaking steroids. Billy comes out swinging and lands every punch, especially in this bridge. It just builds and builds, and by the time it's starting to peak, you can't believe your ears. It's balls to the wall, supersonic, scorcher type stuff here. Before this evening, can it, I have been waiting so long. It's not only the best bridge of Billy Joel's career, the best one he's ever composed, it's one of the best bridges in a pop song ever. It's so mesmerizing that it turns Billy haters into Billy disciples. It proves how great Billy Joel really is. Here's what Bill Medley of the Righteous Brothers said about this song. Until the night, until the night. Billy Joel wrote a song, one of my favorite songs that he ever did, Until the Night. And until it is night. 
just him <sighs> basically mimicking the two yeah. voices. Great yeah. song. Yeah, and he did a good job. I had recorded that because, and I, I wasn't aware of it. And the uh, producers that were doing me in Nashville loved the song and knew that Billy had, Joel had, had kind of written it as, as a Righteous Brothers song. He was a big fan. So I went in and recorded it, but I, I didn't like the recording and, and I was kind of embarrassed that that was the recording. You know, until the night. Great song. I'd love to re redo it sometime. You guys should do it your way. You and Billy. That, Billy and I should do that song. You should. And you know, that's a good idea. Yeah, Billy Joel is just one of those artists that the critics decided to hate from the very start, up front. They spent so much energy and time spewing vitriol. You know, because of just the way you are. Don't go changing. That they were blinded to some of the best music of the era. Don't make the same mistake. Don't judge Billy Joel by We Didn't Start the Fire and Uptown Girl. Judge him by these songs and, and So It Goes and Scenes from an Italian Restaurant. And Vienna. Vienna waits for you. And uh, where's the orchestra? Where's the orchestra? That's the real Billy Joel, the George Gershwin of rock and roll, and the heir to the chairman of the board himself, Frank Sinatra, New York's finest, popular music's greatest melodicist. Billy Joel. So it goes, and so it goes. To hear these songs, check out the playlist below. Leave us a comment about these songs and about Billy Joel. What is your, your hidden gems fiver? What are your five favorite Billy Joel songs? If you don't like Billy Joel because of those songs, go listen to these songs. Open your mind to the, the genius of Billy's greatest songs. Uh, if you like this uh, video, we ask you to subscribe below. Be a part of our community. We'd love to have you. We talk about rock and roll. We get the great interviews all the time. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.